Okay, so here we have the small barn. This is where I've actually built most of the tables and I am going to turn it into the ultimate shop studio that I can build stuff and film stuff. So I will try to show that process in a like a time lapse. Um, hopefully it turns out. Hopefully there's enough space to do what I need to do. So it's exciting. Okay, so it is coming along ever so slowly. I don't know if you can see it very good, but um, I'm putting in the conduit right now. Right here, I've gotta continue over. I just bent this pipe. I should have showed bending it because that was sort of a tricky bend, but. And then I'm spray painting it um, copper. So it looks cool. And uh, I'll get that all in. And I got the shelf in over there. Um, I still need to put a little bit of trim. I got, yeah, I got, it's getting there. It's getting there though. I've got the vent system I'm gonna be putting in up there, um, up there in that little storage spot. It's gonna be a vent um, with the exhaust fan and some filters so that I don't die of lung cancer or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the next step as it comes and as it goes. So these lights aren't actually anything special. They're just uh, LED, four foot LED lights from Home Depot. I took the cover off and I spray painted them um, copper. 
and then I ran the conduit to them. Uh, but yeah, not, not not anything special. Just I think they're 29 bucks a piece, so super cheap lights, but. Okay, so I have got to figure out how to get the conduit to go from there, down, over, bend, and then along here where the next outlet's gonna be right about there. And yes, that is fake brick. I hate myself, but I also couldn't afford real brick, so whatever. I'm gonna go paint this real quick, but I gotta make sure it fits first. in the way and then uh, yeah should work okay she's all painted up Okay, so my goal as of the moment is to make a window insert so that all of the windows sort of look like that window, but not exactly like that window. I wanna have little slats going up and down them so they look a little bit like a factory window or something like that. Okay guys, this is the mostly finished shop. There are some things that I still need to do. I need to hang this dust collector on the ceiling somewhere and put doors in that storage compartment. And then up under here, that ceiling, I have some old National Geographic maps I was gonna glue up there. That would look cool. But I've had a lot of people ask me if they were gonna start doing the kind of stuff I do, what tools they would need to get started. So I thought, you know what, there's a good chance I'll show you the tools that I have that are absolutely necessary. And uh, my shop's already chuck full. I've got five tables I'm basically working on right now. I've got these two nightstands I just finished. They're already getting dusty. I've got these two uh, 
wizard corner floating desk, and then I've got the American Mythic table. I'm just waiting on parts for that. I've got a router bit coming that's going to help me do the uh, burls, flatten the burls up on top. But I thought I'd tell you what tools I need. So first off, you need a good table saw, and the better the table saw, the better. So um, this one has a really accurate fence. You can see this fence. All you have to do to to change this size is turn it back and forth and then lock it down. The measurement right here is super, super accurate. So I trust that. I mean, it's perfectly accurate and you can set it. So if it's off, you can set it so it's correct. Um, next thing I would say you definitely need is a chop saw. I have my chop saw rigged up so it has a shop back hooked onto the back. And down here, you can't really see it, but down here below, I've got a foot pedal that's hooked to the shop back. So when I cut something, I just turn the shop back on, sets up the sawdust, makes it a little bit less dusty in here. And then, so you need a table saw, a chop saw, for sure, for sure. You need a drill press um, with a drill um, press vise because I build a lot of small parts and you've got to be able to hold them and drill them straight. And then next, you're gonna need a router. I've got a couple different routers. This one right here, I use quite a bit um, for all sorts of things. When I'm, like when I'm putting the hinges on a box or something and I gotta make it so the hinge sets in, I use the router to clean it out. Uh, another trick, it's not super necessary, but it really helps, having magnets on the walls so you can put all your tools up so that they just sort of are out of the way, but they're super visible so you can find them. Another thing that's probably the most important tool I have are these drills. Um, I've got a impact drill, I've got a standard drill with just a chuck. If I broke either one of these, I would have another one bought by the end of the day because I cannot work without them, like cannot work. And I've also got a sander, I've got two sanders actually. That one over there is hooked to a uh, vacuum, so it uh, vacuums up all the dust. I got this one, it's portable. Um, got random things like a sawzall, that's not super important. I've got a grinder, that one's sort of important when I when I get to building my uh, my small metal parts. I've got, this is a, uh, a pin nail gun. I actually have an air compressor as well. And I have it hooked up outside, and I don't know if you can see this, there's a switch I have right here. So that it turns on, I can turn it on. It's outside so it's not as noisy. Turn it off. Um, so you're gonna need an air compressor. You're definitely gonna need a drill press, a chop saw, table saw. Those drills, highly necessary. You gotta get good sander. Um, I have a couple different types of sanders. These are for like my metal parts that I build. This is a belt sander, then I've got a little bit of a disc sander with, I don't use the big sander on this, but I use the little disc sander here quite a bit. Those are from Harbor Freight. So they're sort of cheap, but I built a lot of tables using those and they work. I mean, they're like 65 bucks each. Super cheap, super worth it. Um, another thing you're gonna need is clamps. All the clamps you can get, get them. I have C clamps, I've got these big long table clamps so that when I hook a table together, they can stretch out to like five feet and clamp things together. I've got little hand clamps, you know, um, I've got like those kind of clamps, the little spring clamps. Clamps are super important for gluing stuff. Different types of glue, you're gonna need a lot of types of glue when you're in a shop like this. So you're gonna need standard wood glue, you're gonna need like an epoxy um, two-part glue so you can do like wood to metal. Um, you're gonna need a Gorilla Glue that foams so that when you are gonna do epoxy, you put that on all, your, on all the pieces and then um, when you put them together and it'll foam up and seal in the cracks so your epoxy doesn't leak out all over the floor. Um, another super, super important thing is my parts drawers. I got these parts drawers from a military surplus. They're already chuck full. I've got, you know, my hinges, my latches, my screws, my lift supports, my drawer slides, my, there's just, you know, springs, magnets. Those things are so full of parts that necessary definitely necessary so um, obviously you're gonna need little things like chisels you know chisels and files and small hammers and stuff like that for small parts um, another super important
important thing is a Dremel. So when you're doing the really tricky stuff, like you're trying to make a latch hidden and it's not fitting and you can't take the whole table apart, you gotta get in a really small space to clean out the little bit so it fits. Dremel, that's your trick. And then parts, I've got parts everywhere. You see up here I've got locks. These are the old skeleton key locks. You can actually buy them online, brand new, but they look old. Um, yeah, parts, you're gonna need parts storage. So the more shelves and drawers you have, the better. Um, yeah, that's, you know, shop bags to help clean up stuff. Uh, you need a dust collector, like I said earlier. That, I'm gonna have it hung up here so it works a little bit better, but that really keeps the dust out. You may need AC, because if you're in Southern Utah like I am, it gets so stinking hot. It's supposed to be 115 today. It was 114 yesterday. So, yeah, that's all I know really. Oh, safety. I would have a face shield of some kind so that when you are chopping things on the uh, table saw that have nails in them. One time I was chopping something, I didn't realize it had a nail in it. Caught the nail, stabbed it right in my forehead and it was actually stuck in my forehead. So, face shield, those are necessary. I also got a uh, apron, leather apron, and a good quality mask for when I'm doing like lacquers and stuff. Well, I don't do lacquers, but when I do like spray paint stuff. Um, so that I don't get whatever when you breathe stuff you're not supposed to. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Not too complicated, probably. To get started, probably be about three or four thousand dollars in material, plus a shop, which is anywhere from ten to a million dollars. I don't even know. So, that's all you need. Okay, so this is part two. I showed you what you need in a wood shop for what I do. Here's what you need in a metal shop. You're gonna need a welder. So this welder is a Hobart, but it does really small pieces. Um, it's a gas welder so that you can have, I think this is 70, 30 mix gas, I don't remember. Um, but basically that makes it so you get really nice clean welds. So you definitely need a welder. You definitely need a drill press, a big strong drill press that can go through metal. Um, you're gonna need an air compressor. You can see we've got it hooked up on the wall here. Um, we've got a shop back here for cleaning up the, the mess afterwards. With the welder, obviously, you're gonna need a welding mask and all the gloves and safety for that. Um, another thing, an anvil, and more importantly than the anvil, is a clamp that you can weld on. Well, not weld on, but like, um, so it can clamp it down and you can um, use it sort of as an anvil as well. It has an anvil top right here. Um, so a really good clamp, a lot of different little clamps. If you're gonna be doing a lot of um, welding on small pieces, I use like a drill clamp. So I'll put my little piece in there over on the metal table, clamp it all up, weld it together, super important. Another thing that you're gonna need is like grinders and buffers. Um, so if you're really gonna get into this and you don't have a friend like I have who has an amazing shop that he lets me borrow, um, it's gonna be a lot of money. Another thing you're gonna need for metal is you're gonna need a saw that'll cut it. This is a band saw, it's sort of an older version, but that band saw right there saves so much time and energy. This band saw is for metal too, but it doesn't work nearly as good as that uh, cut off band saw down there. Um, so as far as the metal shop, and then you're gonna need grinders and those, band, those uh, belt grinders I have over in the wood shop, I actually use those to clean up the pieces, the little metal pieces we build. So, um, oh, another thing that's super important is a buffer. The buffer cleans up everything. This is his wood shop, pretty handy. Um, buffer, this Will has had it. I use those wheels so often. That will clean up your metal, and make it look like brand new. Um, if you can, get a bigger disc sander. This one needs to be replaced. This is a rubber bar. You go like that along there. That sanding wheel is basically like new. 
that rubber bar gets all the uh, sawdust and all of the tar or uh, sap out of the grain on the sandpaper. So, uh, pretty handy. But I use that for metal all the time too, clean up edges and stuff. So, yeah, you basically need a wood shop and a metal shop, which is fun. That's just fun stuff to have.